Hepatic mRNA has to be processed in various ways before being exported from the nucleus for translation. One such process takes place during the termination phase of the transcription cycle, where a long chain of adenines is added to the 3' end of the mRNA transcript. This process is called polyadenylation. When you have completed this exercise, you should understand the process of polyadenylation and understand the proposed models of termination in eukaryotes. Polyadenylation involves several factors. The extended C-terminal domain of the largest subunit of RNA polymerase, often called the polymerase tail or CTD tail, is involved in recruiting two of the enzymes necessary for polyadenylation, the cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor and the cleavage stimulation factor. When RNA polymerase has reached the end of a gene, it encounters a specific sequence called a poly-A signal sequence. Once this sequence is transcribed into the RNA, it triggers the transfer of CPSF and CSTF to the RNA. Once CPSF and CSTF are bound to the RNA, additional cleavage factors are recruited as well, leading to the cleavage of the RNA. An enzyme called poly-A polymerase is then recruited to the cleaved RNA. Poly-A polymerase adds about 200 adenines to the new 3' end produced by the cleavage of the RNA. Poly-A polymerase uses ATP as a source of adenine. Poly-A polymerase utilizes the same mechanism as RNA polymerase. However, it does so without a template. It is not clear what determines the length of the poly-A tail, but that process involves other proteins that bind specifically to the poly-A sequence. RNA polymerase does not dissociate immediately when the RNA is cleaved and polyadenylated. Instead, it continues to move along the template, generating a second RNA molecule that can grow as long as several hundred nucleotides before terminating. However, it is clear that the process of polyadenylation is required for termination. Two basic models have been proposed to explain the link between polyadenylation and termination. The first model proposes that the transfer of CPSF and CSTF from the polymerase CTD tail to the RNA triggers a conformational change in polymerase. This conformational change might reduce the processivity of polymerase, leading to dissociation soon afterward. The enzymes necessary for 5' capping are displaced during elongation, so the second RNA molecule does not form a 5' cap. The second model for eukaryotic termination states that it is possible that the absence of a 5' cap on the second RNA molecule is sensed by the polymerase, causing the polymerase to dissociate. Polyadenylation is the process whereby a long chain of adenines is added to the 3' end of a eukaryotic mRNA transcript during the termination phase of transcription. Polyadenylation involves several factors. The cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor, the cleavage stimulation factor, and additional cleavage factors work together to cleave the RNA transcript after transcription of a poly-A signal sequence. CPSF then recruits poly-A polymerase, which catalyzes polyadenylation. Two basic models have been proposed to explain the link between polyadenylation and termination. In the first model, transfer of CPSF and CSTF from the polymerase CTD tail to the RNA triggers a conformational change in RNA polymerase, leading to dissociation.
The second model for eukaryotic termination states that it is possible that the absence of a 5' cap on the second RNA molecule is sensed by the RNA polymerase, causing the polymerase to dissociate. You have completed this exercise.